If we'd stood at the bottom of Table Mountain 200 years ago, we probably wouldn't have imagined any way up other than by foot. Since then, our vision for Table Mountain has grown. As time has passed, we've wondered not just how, but how many we can get up. What could we do on and around the mountain? And most inspiringly, what could this mean for us? Around 1900, two very brave souls could get up Table Mountain in an open skip, the so-called soapbox. There was also a trolley track from Weinberg and an aerial ropeway from Simonstown. All of these were limited and ultimately dismantled. Although the vision of getting more people up more easily had stuck, the Anglo-Boer War and then the First World War intervened. But a desire to counter the post-war depression by turning Cape Town into the country's leading tourist destination brought some momentum. In 1926, a Norwegian engineer, Trigli Stromse, suggested a cableway. He teamed up with Sir Alfred Hennessy. Mr. Stromser had arrived at their house one Sunday morning with a model of a cableway which he set up on my grandfather's roll top desk to show how it worked. I think my grandfather was very visionary and could see the potential of this idea. He also had the energy and knowledge, so he then approached Sir David Roth and Sir Ernest Oppenheimer which made it possible. They founded the Table Mountain Aerial Cableway Company, which still runs the cableway today. I could just imagine what thoughts must have been going through their head was how do you get the cable to the top? How do you get the machinery up here? It must have been a huge undertaking and you had to be a visionary to do something like that. They were very uh, brave because there's a mountain, no roads, but uh, they, they stuck it up and Thank heavens they did it. After decades of inertia, it took them just three years to build the first cableway, which opened on the 4th of October, 1929. The first cable cars were made of steel and wood. They could carry up to 20 people at a time. In 1958, the cars were upgraded. They were constructed out of metal and had open windows. Capacity increased by four to 24 passengers. Another upgrade in 1974 increased passenger capacity to 28. Then, the optimism of a democratic South Africa increased tourism and once again great vision inspired a radical overhaul. The third chairman, Louis Duval, had the vision to completely redo the cableway. Moving now to Cape Town where Table Mountain Cableway is to be upgraded. In 1997, at a cost of 102 million rand, two new cars were installed with revolving floors. There are only three of those in, in, in the world. The cars were over five meters in diameter and we had to put them on a flatbed truck. But it was very exciting. When they got here, they had to be lifted up. We had a hell of a big crane here. The upgrade was enormous. It put us on the map worldwide and it's a special feeling when you know you have world-class equipment put in place. At the moment the upgrade happened, the, the numbers roughly doubled. Each can carry 65 passengers and get them to the top of the mountain in five minutes. Welcome to the Barton Rock Cowboy. We've gone from no way up and nothing there to an easy way up one of the world's most famous landmarks. We knew we had to evolve from a transport company into a visitor attraction, and we worked extremely hard as a team to achieve this. Changing from being a transport company to be one of the best attractions has really made a huge difference to um, the growth of the company. It's amazing, it took 29 years for the Careway to reach its first million, and now they're down to 11 months to reach a new million passenger, so that's phenomenal records. A few years ago, Table Mountain was declared one of the new seven wonders of nature. When we heard the Table Mountain one as one of the seven wonders of nature, we were absolutely overjoyed. And it has made an incredible difference to the number of visitors that visit Cape Town. 
For Cape Town's tourism, the significance is huge. Pale Mountain Edel Cableway has been a significant and iconic attraction in this destination for over 90 years. And we are so thrilled by the fact that it continues to invite local and international tourists from all over the world to come and experience what we literally have on our doorstep. From the beginning, our approach has been safety first. We conduct maintenance in line with the highest global standards set by the Swiss governing body for cableways. After 90 years, we are still accident free. We also constantly look at ways of enhancing our visitor experience. Some of them come up once in a lifetime. So it is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We need to make sure that they enjoy their visit up the mountain. They come all the way from different areas in the world to come to Table Mountain and to have an awe-inspiring experience is very important. We are fully committed to environmental, social and economic responsibility and continue to receive recognition and accolades for our responsible tourism initiatives. These include being carbon neutral, ISO 14001 and OSAS 18001 certifications the Imvelo Award for Responsible Tourism, the Africa Responsible Tourism Award, TripAdvisor's Certificate of Excellence, and being named Africa's leading tourist attraction in the World Travel Awards. Today I sit before you and I look back at 90 years, 90 years of experience, 90 years of exposure, 90 years of being recognized on just about every platform for the amazing work that has been done by a team that is dedicated, committed and constantly looking for ways to improve the visitor experience. It should come as no surprise that we are currently nominated as one of the leading attractions of the world. To be recognized on such a global platform is testimony to the hard work every staff member has ensured that our brand ranks highly amongst visitors, both international and local. Since 2001, our Class in the Clouds program has enlightened more than 300,000 learners about the environment. When the school kids come up here, you'll find out there's lots of excitement. It's their first time to be on the mountain. Some are from the rural areas, so they get so excited when they reach up here. Giving a child that experience to come and visit Table Mountain, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. It makes me feel good about myself as a person. Responsible tourism also means we aim to make a positive impact on the people who work with us. The company offers bursaries and I took advantage of the opportunity. I started my studies, I was promoted to an assistant accountant and then financial accountant. As a person, um, I'm growing every day. It's just great working here. <laughs> After 90 years, we have many stories to tell. But the most inspiring stories are those of the people who are moved by Table Mountain. Some of them experience it up close. Some of them see it from afar and are stirred to dream of possibilities. Nelson Mandela said, During the many years of incarceration on Robben Island, we often looked across Table Mountain at its magnificent silhouette. To us on Robben Island, Table Mountain was a beacon of hope. It represented the mainland, to which we knew we would one day return. It's been a good one, I won't lie to you. I enjoy every single day up here. It's been an amazing 90 years so far. We've helped millions of people experience the beautiful views from Table Mountain who might not have been able to otherwise. And that's part of its success, is that it never stands still and it's always trying to improve. Here's wishing you another 90 years of success and growing tourism volumes to Cape Town. Then what remains is for us as Cape Townians to take pride in our mountain, to take pride in our national assets and to make sure that each and every one of us become an ambassador for this beautiful city of ours, to give life to the vision that our forefathers had.